Hey, you doing here? Okay, um, getting going to show you simple screen recorder. I just wanted to show the preview to see that my audio was working. Make sure uh, you don't need the preview doing desktop, <clears throat> and it uses more resources. That's one thing it tells you right there. Well, it's only on f 10 frames per second, but it's recording at 30 frames per second. 1920 by 1080. I've done a couple of little tests. I know it's going to work, uh, and you can tell you can't hear the audio but you can see the signal and that's actually good that you don't hear it because then it would just make uh, echoes in your recording <coughs> and I wouldn't leave that on because I'm going to go off I wouldn't see it anyway I'm going off over here here's how I installed it I discovered it well I didn't think about opening up the website but uh, I actually first I was trying to install GTK record my desktop and it is I kept looking and looking in DNF Dragora DNF Dragora Dragora uh, or uh, or G, I've used it used to use it before uh, I ever heard you know OBS Studio ever came out. I used it for years. I liked the GTK GUI interface for it. Record my desktop is uh, just a terminal app, but you can either use GTK or Qt, and I've used them both. And I'll, I always like GTK better just the way it worked. But anyway, um, it. Uh, not there. Fedora, it's not in the Fedora repos. And well, I think it used to be in the RPM Fusion repos. It's not in either one. Now it might be in Debane still. I kind of think maybe it is. I think I installed it on my laptop that has Debane on it. But uh, anyway, and I tried uh, just record my desktop and it's still no match. So uh, so then I just left that there and I I had already found this. Uh, some simple screen recorder and the command is DNF install simple screen recorder so I ran it found it you know on just searching for desktop recorders for Linux and uh, just went there it was it's very small it's only 2.3 megabytes and uh, got it installed and so then uh, I went ahead and uh, closed that now went ahead and did a search on my uh, <coughs> With the desktop search app, it goes away when you go up there, but uh, you can see up there where my mouse was, and there it was, simple screen recorder. So I uh, opened it up. I just did screenshots because I knew I couldn't, uh, I knew I was going to set it up, and I, I knew that it, you know, you, like if I tried to do an OBS video of it, then it would, uh, they, they would both be wanting to take control of the desktop and the audio and everything else, and it would just be conflict. So all I could really do is do screenshots. It's called they call it SSR. That makes me think of USSR in, instantly. Um, so um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, some fellow that wrote it, like it was Mart Martin Bar Barrett. Martin Barrett. I saw that he had a website. Oh, that's a screenshot. You can't click on that. So anyway, um, here's how it, the default, how it starts out, and that's one th reason why I made my uh, screen uh, my screenshots. And I saw that it said uh, input profile, and it said none, so I, was, I went and said new. Anyway, that's my screen resolution default, defaulted to 30 frames per second. That's what I wanted. Record the cursor, I wanted that. Oh, record audio, yeah, I wanted that. And it was already defaulted to pulse audio. Now, it defaulted to monitor of built-in analog. And I thought, okay, maybe. It kind of seemed like I remembered I had to do that in uh, GTK. Or I always just called it GTK. Record my desktop in order to get the desktop sounds. But uh, later I found out that was wrong. And when we go through here, well, uh, there's where I'm saving my sim uh, sinful spelled it wrong can't believe that I kept looking and looking trying to get that stuff right <laughs> simple okay uh, let's try and fix that somehow um, monitor of built-in audio you know that's that's where I left it in a, in a first video uh, well my first two videos were silent but uh, I'll, I'll, as I go through I'll try to go through it okay built-in audio stereo that's what I changed it to and that's what works. So, 
and, and uh, now there could be also I'm not using the mic input on my computer I'm running my SM58 through my Behringer mixer my Behringer effects with you know compressor and noise gate into the line input well no because that shouldn't make any it, yeah it automatically got whether I think it would work like this built in uh, that's the name you know well built in that's uh, you know the onboard audio the chip chips that it has in this computer this Lenovo Wi-Fi but anyway that would be it's just going to say that about any built-in analog stereo now it might say something different if you had a real audio card or something you might have more than one choice I have a USB uh, sound card that I've been using so to plug my lapel into the computer and use it as a, have it available uh, but not use them to get at the same time but it can switch back and forth and it'll be a studio between the lapel and the SM58 that way if I need to get up and move around I got about 16 foot of cable usually well you know I won't go on that's what I'm doing right now I won't go on any further than that but I didn't plug it in because I didn't want them to conflict and I went back to monitor oh, I was just looking through it so I went back to monitor and used it that way and then the default yeah the default was um, I gave uh, I had already given it or I gave I, th I think I gave it yeah I gave it a name and it, well, it defaulted to simple screen recorder. I made a folder for it. And uh, the default was Matroska MKV H264 constant rate factor. I just left that alone. I don't know really what that's supposed to mean. Um, so I left it alone. I guess it's, uh, well, I can kind of guess they're trying to keep a constant the factor it's not the constant bit rate but a factor sort of like an average I guess that it's trying to keep of the bit rates because uh, you know some bit rate uh, formats are variable and some are well constant bit rate is CBR and that's actually the only one that you can stream to YouTube is is constant bit rate you might have to throw that all the way up or something to get it to work on YouTube I'm not sure I did see a post on their page where somebody did make it work on YouTube, but then you can't. They but then they're in that post. They said, "Isn't is there? Could you implement a way so that we could save the file and stream at the same time?" That's what OBS does by default. Or I mean, you can do that. And uh, they um, anyway. So I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to save the file. Because if you know if you if you lose your connection, something goes wrong, and you've lost your hope, you lost your video, so um, or at least you lost that portion of it. And what I do is stream to YouTube uh, normally on OBS and save the file as a backup. And sometimes I have to use it, but right now every time I click on start stream on OBS, it crashes, and I've tried to fix it. Well, a couple of weeks now, I've been trying to fix it on and off. I spent three days here and three days there. I could spend the third day I've been trying to fix it again and what so I decided that I needed another screen recorder so that I could show I'm gonna uninstall OBS and then reinstall it so that's why I went and found this I thought I was just gonna get a, uh, one I'd already used before the record my desktop but it's not available so this turned into a bit of time a uh, uh, time consuming thing oh and that was checked by default and I took it off separate file segment or it was when I well, it isn't right now, but it was later. I changed it to F FLV, and I see I'll have to keep on going to show that. And I do know that YouTube only selects accepts one audio bit right now. It's 128. Uh, although my uh, OBS is working perfectly, and it was set to 160. So, but it was also set a checkbox on OBS saying enforce streaming service. So I think it was being all changed for. YouTube because I went in and changed them all to 120 it didn't matter but it's Vorbis which YouTube doesn't you won't accept Vorbis uh, uh, so um, audio format codec so um, I changed it let's see there's where I saved my name that I gave it I did spell it right that time simple screen recorder and then oh actually it said do you uh, do you want to override it? And I said no. Because I thought this was another. See, I put Don Output Simple Screen Recorder. And the first name I gave it was just Don Simple Screen Recorder. So that wasn't what I thought. So you didn't, I didn't need to do that again. So I said no. <clears throat> then my name I made up there, 
Don output simple screen recorder. It's still there though. So, uh, but I don't know what the settings would be. So then when I saw in the drop down list that there was a YouTube, I thought, okay, I'll select that. That should work on, on YouTube when I upload it. Uh, at least I thought it might. And then it says live stream 300 kilobits. Well, that's actually the minimum that YouTube takes now. I found that out looking, trying to fix OBS. So, um, yeah, this one I would suppose is your own custom settings, uh, which I guess I'm not operating on that now. Well, actually, <laughs> I may have changed the YouTube settings. I'm not sure what the heck I did with that because that got me confused. It, it, that window kept. It's not in every window, I don't think. that. Yeah, okay, it is, and I wasn't. I just didn't realize it. So I, went, I made one called Sin Pulse with an N screen recorder. Then I ignored it there. I didn't see it, I guess. And then here, I started to save one, changed my mind, and then, but it still looks like it's going to be in there. I don't know. I didn't look. I forgot to look again. So um, now we're we're still not to where I got it. Okay, so I saved that. Oh, I did end up saving that. Oh, I think it still wanted me to save it. When I hit continue, it went to save, the save dialog. So I went ahead and... Uh, Oh, and then see over here at the bottom right, it says uh, uh, you're going to save your uh, settings or your file. or Well, it was it was setting up your file format that you're going to save it as. That's what it turned out to be. And it said Matroska files. And so I was like, oh, I, I was like, what are Matroska files anyway? That's not one of the ones I'm really familiar with. And then I saw there's a huge drop-down list. And I saw MP4 right away and WebM. And now YouTube accepts those. But I thought, well, I want to do FLV if I can because, uh, and they had that. And there's a lot more than that below that. But it does say in the program not all of them will work. But I know uh, FLV doesn't work my machine as hard as, near as hard as MP4. And WebM, some, you know, there's, it's all right, but it, some things <clears throat> it doesn't work real well with. And so I, I wanted to go ahead and stick with FLV because I've had really good luck with that using OBS so I did that and then when I got back in there I was like no wait I know YouTube doesn't support Vorbus and why does it say Matroska still and it says MKV so I, that's what Matroska is yeah, that's what it is I'm familiar with the MKV I just didn't know it was called Matroska I just forgot or whatever forgot I ever saw that and see it says it's going to save uh, separate file segments and add timestamps and add timestamp to the name. That's good. Separate file segments. Uh, I thought I was going to have a screenshot of that. Maybe I will in a minute. But what it does is uh, every time you hit pause, it starts a new file. And I thought, well, I don't want that. Uh, so I took it out later. Uh, Vorbis, you know, I was down there. Okay, so then I saw, okay, my only choices are Vorbis, MP3, AAC, or Uncompressed. So I went with MP3 on the audio. And then... Uh, <clears throat> there's where the explanation it tells you what you know what they think is best and everything uh, it's really good it's a real good program and really good information to help you get it going uh, you wouldn't even have to already have a lot of knowledge about this stuff if you could just like they said at the beginning in this web page you just take the defaults and it'll work of course that doesn't mean it'll work on any other service like YouTube. You couldn't upload these files to YouTube. I knew that already because I had that problem with Record My Desktop. I actually still have about 200 videos I had made with Record My Desktop that I never. I need to convert, transcode into you know something that uh, YouTube will take. I haven't ever done it yet. So now they're pretty old, like two or three years old or more. Now they're more than that. Anyway. <coughs> um, yeah, and then that was all about the uh, file formats, you know, the container. They, that's what they call the container. You see, it's the file extension you see is what you'll see. And so uh, then I, uh, I realized, I kept looking back and forth at that, and I was like, okay, I told it to save it as a FLV, but why is it showing MKV? Finally, I realized down at the bottom it says other. So, oh, and I went to YouTube also. Before I decided to change anything, I went to YouTube to make sure. And the audio, it's AAC or MP3. And I was talking about bitrate encoding, CBR. That's constant bitrate. I saw that the other day. If 
frames per second is quite a wide variety, but uh, my machine wouldn't really handle more than 30 anyway. And on desktop video, you wouldn't really need you wouldn't need it. And your bit rate, audio bit rate, 128, so I'm good there. And the other stuff, well, you want 44 one hertz, which I think is already defaulted in there. And then some of this other stuff, I looked for these settings in OBS and couldn't find it, and it has uh, has a lot of settings you can do in there. And uh, this, the resolution that was already there, you know, 1920 by 1080 is one of the ones they select. But see, they, I think they've gone up recently because they're trying, they're going up to 4K video. So there's 3,000 to 6,000 at 1920 by 1080, and it's different on each one. So depending on what resolution you're doing as to what bit kilobits per second, you know, the bit of the video bit rate you're going to be able to use. Um, and that's the thing where I did not know that. Uh, and until OBS Studio started crashing, but changing all this didn't fix OBS. So I think I, my last ditch effort is, is what I'm getting ready to do is uninstall OBS and reinstall it, and I'm going to use Simple Screen Recorder to make a video of it. So I finally I selected Other, and then I was able to put uh, FLB as the file extension. Now it shows up in the window. It automatically puts your file extension, which is really good. It makes it easier. Because if you have to remember to do that yourself, then uh, like you do with uh, VLC, for instance, you can stream with VLC. You can do a desktop video and save the file, but uh, it uses a lot of resources. So, um, yeah, and the codec MP3 bitrate 128. Uh, H.264 is the only one that YouTube supports on the stream. So, and I don't, I don't know about what you could upload, but uh, that's what I used. And the preset, I didn't even open that up. I'm sure there's other ones, but super fast. Uh, that was a, I just left that because I, I, I'm sure it was fine. You know, that was a default. And uh, now it says, uh, for yeah, what I did for advanced users, you can use LibAV, FFmpeg format, but many of them are not useful. And that's talking about all the other file extensions. There must be... 50 to 100 in there. There's so many I didn't even see them all. And uh, the timestamp, and when I saw, I was like, oh yeah, I'll add the timestamp, uh, the time and the, the date to the file. That's perfect. That way you don't ever override another file. And there's finally where I saw what that was about. Uh, get a se separate file every time you pause and resume. So I was like, well, I don't want that. So I unchecked that. And I tried it out and it works. <gasps> And um, now it shows you the, uh, you could change the hotkeys or you could turn them off. And sound notifications would make noise in your video, so I wouldn't want that. But the control R seemed good. That was the default. And then I saw this, the, the frame preview frame rate, it was only 10 frames per second. But I thought, well, and it tells you, you know, well, it's going to use up a lot more CPU if you, uh, if you preview it. And like, for instance, uh, VLC, I, I know uh, when you do a desktop, save a desktop, you know, stream to a file with VLC. If you try to have a preview at the same time, my quad core, i5 quad core with 4 gig RAM can't handle it. So, uh, you know, you better have a heck of a machine if you're going to do all that. So there's no point when you're doing a desktop video, though, because you're not going to be on that. And, uh, oh, and yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm on Fedora 28 here. And I can switch to my other desktops, and it does follow me. It doesn't just stay on that one. I was kind of worried if it was going to work. So um, I say that and watch it not work. But I'm sure, uh, yeah, it worked before, so it should be working now. Now there's a preview uh, when I turned it on, but there's no. Well, I don't think I was talking then anyway. But there's no audio there now. I realize that I didn't have the audio settings right anyway until I tried tried a couple of tests. So uh, then I've said, oh, I can make the screen bigger so I can read this stuff better. Like that, the uh, log down here at the bottom, that tells you what's going on. This tells you what's going on when you're recording. And uh, let's see. Oh, there's one when I was actually recording. See, screenshot of the output. And... Uh,
you haven't recorded anything, so there's nothing to do. I, t I think I just hit save to see what would happen. And, uh, oh, wait. Here's what happened. Okay, so I was recording along, made a nice long, uh, you know, vi intro video. I mean, a first video. And uh, I said, okay, now how do I stop this thing? Well, all I saw was pause recording up here. And, of course, the hotkey, which I think is only, I think control R only starts it. I don't think it stops it. I'm not sure. Maybe it does. I didn't. I read the deal so quickly. They're telling about it. I didn't pay attention. So I hit cancel recording. And it went back to the start over screen or kind of to the start over screen. Anyway, I ended up back to not this screen, but one similar. And I hit say recording. And it said, you haven't done anything yet. So then I realized, oh, crap. There, my recording has gone. It deleted. Cancel deletes your recording. Cancel does not stop your recording. You have to hit, instead of saying stop, it's that you just hit save recording. And again, you might be able to hit control R and it'll toggle it to, you know, toggle on, toggle off. I'm not sure. I didn't try it because I, I didn't want to lose my recording again. And, uh, and then it says immediately it goes to this screen. Your recording has been saved. And then at the bottom it's you go back to start screen. And that's what happens. You go back to the start screen, and then you go through the wizard again to start your new recording. Let's see. Hit the wrong button, I think. Oh, that's the end of my screen. No, that's not the end of my screenshots. So then it looks like this. Only, uh, you know, that's my profile that I saved. So uh, I think that's really... Uh, I, I figured I needed to do that because I wanted to give it a name I would know it was mine. And so it's just like it should be, except for it's on monitor of built-in analog stereo. And I changed it to built-in analog stereo because I didn't have any audio. So then I started, you know, went through the, the I'm still going through the wizard. And uh, I don't know, there may be a way to bypass the wizard, but it, it helps you make sure everything's set up right. So I probably won't try to get around that. Now I have an audio. Now the preview has an audio meter with audio. Actually, it already had the meter. I just didn't see it, but now the audio is actually moving in the preview. So I'm like, oh, good. So now I know I got audio. You don't hear it, but that's good because then you don't want that. It would make an echo. If you heard it in the preview and, and it was being recorded, you would make an echo. I know that from OBS has the ability to turn on monitoring of your, pre, of your audio preview and it'll make echoes. So then... Uh, you know, I stopped that one again by hitting save recording and it says, okay, it's been saved. And that was the last one. That's done. Okay. Whoops. Always forget. You got to hit that. Okay. To get out of there. All right. So, uh, and there's my video that I'm making. It's slow to count up, but it is. I have seen it go to the next, you know, number there. There it goes. So it uh, seems slower than when you're making one with OBS. I don't know why it would be, but well, it could be because it's not using as much space. That's probably what it is. Look how small those files are. But uh, I mean, it's well, it is just a desktop video. I don't see why that would make any difference. And it's an FLV flash video format is what that is. <clears throat> and uh, well, it could be that the resolution's rather low since I I uh, yeah, it, I mean, it looks good when I watched it back, but, <coughs> yeah, it could be that uh, it just said YouTube. You know, I selected the one that said YouTube. I'm hoping that, uh, well, I'm I'm pretty sure they will because, I, like I just showed you, well, everything I just showed you, I can upload these and they'll work. And what I was thinking ahead of time is what if I did want to just stream one, then it should work as a stream. That's the other thing I was thinking. So, and it doesn't use, uh, it's just pretty steady at around 17% of the CPU. So that doesn't, uh, and the OBS usually stays around 23% and then it'll go up and down depending on what you're doing. When you switch over to a camera, it usually goes up and you can catch it when you, if you come back and look at this, you know, as, as you're switching. Well, actually I can be on the camera and then I can come over and look at this. I can, anytime I want, you know, but uh, you can't do any cameras or anything. It's just a desktop recorder. 
but that's pretty cool, especially for a backup desktop recorder. Or, like, there's been a lot of times recently when I wanted to show exactly what I was doing in OBS, like the settings and stuff, and uh, can't uh, can't show them because you, you can't do them. Um, of course, I don't know what would happen if I opened OBS. I'll do that later, not in this video, but... Uh, opened up OBS and uh, while this is running uh, they probably just get an error saying OBS can't work because this one's recording you know but for all I know something could crash so I won't do that right now I don't want to mess up this video because I'm gonna plan on uploading it so that's my first run of sim or not my first run but that's my simple screen recorder it's got that Hal looking thing Hal from 2001 Space Odyssey I mean, it's really just a record button. I guess you could click that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to click. I, I don't want to do anything that I, I'm not sure works. I'm going to click Save Recording, and um, then we'll uh, go from there with all this. Okay, so, oh, it's already 26 minutes, so it's the time, frames per second. It's really doing good at staying on frame. I saw it, yeah, and I see 29.9. It's staying really close to 30 frames. None of them stay exactly on you know what you set for frames per second I, I had kind of well I knew that but if they can't vary ver be variable then they will uh, I knew they all drop frames when they need to you know uh, then you would just probably break the video you know or crash the app uh, file size 85 megabytes bit rate yeah see that's a really low bit rate the one I showed in that screenshot, actually, the minimum for streaming to YouTube is 3,000. So, really, if I was going to stream to YouTube, I'd probably have to change it to that 3,000 instead of that YouTube format, you know. Then I would get a lot bigger file. Yeah. That's why I'm getting small files. But when I they looked great when I watched them back, so that's fine, you know. MP4 would be a little bit better quality, but it, encoding MP4 live you know on a desktop video or any or whatever or making or, well with OBS I was doing switching between cameras and desktop video it just this machine can't handle it for very long at all it starts wearing out so uh, filling up the memory in the cache and everything and the pro I think it works the processor too hard well it doesn't work the processor super hard because like I was saying the other day I was doing it and uh, actually I found out that it works better using FFmpeg than the Default, what they don't say what it is, but the default uh, uh, OBS encoding uh, codec engine, whatever the encoding engine codec, whatever they call it, it just says uh, regular or default or something. There's two choices in my in my system, FFmpeg, because I have that installed, and the default. I'm talking about OBS, and what I'm reason I'm right here is because. OBS generally stays 23 to 25% CPU usage, but when I was doing the MP4s, it was staying more like 28 to 30, which is not horrible, but then when I open more stuff, you could tell, you could see the machines lagging, which is going to end up lagging, you're messing up your video. So, um, but when I, did, I tried to do it with the default, the machine, you know, you couldn't go 10 minutes and the machine was just about ready to lock up. So you can't, I couldn't do it. I, and oddly enough, uh, maybe I just didn't do it right because I remember trying FFmpeg and it just, I thought it just didn't work. But the other day it did and it worked pretty well. And it was making an MP4. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a way, well, like I said, the, uh, it, maybe if I'll try it later, but like if I would to hit uh, Control R right now, it may go ahead and save my recording, so I might be able to do that from another screen and not have to come back and show this preview. Uh, but that's not a real big deal. But it's kind of nice to not have to show your recording software when you're doing a desktop recording, you know, unless you just want to. With OBS, you pretty well have to. We wouldn't have to if you had a dual monitor set up you could put it over in the other monitor but I don't so so anyway um, yeah if you're recording on a laptop that you, 
uh, and then you plug in a monitor to it. That's the simplest way to do that sort of thing, but I don't have a laptop that can handle this doing that. This is the only this is the most powerful machine I have except for mom's that I'm building, which is a this is hers is a, a AMD 8300 8 core with uh, 8 gig of RAM and uh, fixing to put a new motherboard in it and Hopefully it'll even work even better. But anyway, um, okay, so I'm going to, oh, I was fixing to hit control. I had it ready to hit control something. Okay, so I'm going to hit save, and that will instantly stop the video. And the uh, cool thing is it just saves it. You don't have to, it doesn't give me any output, make you type anything in or anything. It's just done. And you don't have to wait for it to encode. With GTK Record My Desktop, you weren't done yet because it would only record an AUG video or, and you had to wait. The longer the video, the longer you had to wait. Like, however, usually it was about how long your video was is how long it took to encode it. So that was really a pain to make videos that way. I made a lot of them too. All right, now I'm gonna go. Bye bye.